we'll just do what we always do and start out <laughs> in the blue. <laughs> well, the, the conversation was flying and we, we jumped and we're not straight recording. into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we weren't recording. So, but yeah, it's it's probably the same over here in the UK. If you if you went on to any, any construction site, whether it be a big one in the in the city centres or a small residential one, the the answer would probably be the same that the guys are probably not fully aware of everything that's out there for them to help them. Yeah. And um, but there is a better culture over here of trying to spread the awareness and get a message out there that you can reach out to all these several different um, avenues of support that they, that we have over here and and that even that is growing now um, there's a lot of people that are setting up their own sort of micro coaching um, and um, mental health support networks that are out here uh, yeah. even things that aren't within the construction industry are crossing over um, yeah. and and doing work within the industry as well which is really really good because they're bringing in skills um, that isn't within the industry and sometimes somebody looking at in from the outside can spot the obvious mistakes uh, it's like mm -hmm. i have a when, when i used to run the big sites uh, my contracts manager would come on site just just to have a check up a weekly check and he'd go bang and point something out to me and like why didn't i see that and sometimes yeah. you can't see the wood for the trees because you're yeah. blinded by seeing it all day every day yeah and that's what i try to tell people too because not be you know, I don't work directly in the industry or I'm not on job sites every day, but that's actually a good thing because mm. I can see things with, with kind of clear eyes. So I try to tell people that a lot too, like don't shy away from somebody different than you because that's, you can use that to your advantage in so many ways. It's yeah, just it, like, it's like with any, it's like with anything, when you get help for any problem, it's good to have people that you can relate to, but you also want another something else to yeah. supplement that. Just just something neutral um, that understands but doesn't live it, sort of. Yeah, thing. yeah, and it's it's like going and asking your friend for a bit of advice on maybe something financial. I've got a bit of money. Mm -hmm. I want to invest. Would you do this? And, you can go and ask them because they'll give you a valid different opinion on how they would do it and it, it's exactly the same with this if if you've got you're worried about something in your life that's going on whether it is work related or whether it is something in your home life or your personal life speaking to somebody completely out of those circles can give you a, an unbiased opinion and a mm -hmm. better understanding and a better or a different view because so, different eyes see different things so exactly you know it's and it's kind of like a sometimes taking some of the emotion out of it say you're having yeah. family issues while you do have to address that it's like if you're having issues with a crew on a job site you do need to address that but sometimes perspective from somebody else who isn't involved doesn't have the uh the feelings involved or the frustration involved in it all just gives you that fresh perspective where you can like take a deep breath and start you know yeah. start from there so but yeah that's good that, that people are doing that there now i see i just see so many more people over there speaking up um which is really really good you share a lot of people who who are coming forward and i think you're inspiring a lot of that guys Thank to you. come forward it's, and, it's the, the whole point of what, what i try to do is to say that i'm just the same as you i'm just the same as them and I'm no different. I'm nobody special. I am just a bricklayer from the northwest of England that goes to work, loves the interaction, loves the crap, loves the banter, all the jokes and everything. But at the same time, we can sit and have a, a conversation, open and honest conversation, a, a non-judgmental conversation about what's going on in your life. And then we can, we can deal with it in the moment. And if I can't help them, I can certainly direct them in the right direction to get the extra bit of help and support that they need. And that, yeah. and that they deserve um, yeah. more than anything. Um, you don't have to suffer in silence. You don't have to think, I can't ask because I don't want to look as if I can't do my job because that was my biggest problem. I, I really didn't want people to think that if I can't look after my own emotions, how can I look after all these guys that I have working with me? And once I got over that and understood that there is a help and support out there when you do need it, 
um, it, it was just a lot more free. It's like a weight lifted off me. Uh, it's, yeah. it's the best way of ex as if somebody has been sat on your chest and then somebody comes along and, and rips them off you. Uh, and it's that freedom. It's like, I can breathe now because yeah. you're, you're getting the help and support that you need and you deserve. Yeah. We're, I think it's, we all are guilty of that at some point. We, we make ourselves prisoners to our own minds for some reason. And we just, yeah, it's like human tendency to, to suffer in silence. It's, and it's something I think life kind of conditions us to do because you look at kids, like, as you know, you have three little kids. They, they just show, express every emotion they're feeling yeah. right when they're feeling it. And over time, that's kind of programmed out of us, but yeah. then it's overcorrected. You know, you do, you do, it's important to learn to regulate your emotions, which kids eventually learn to do, but you don't want to overcorrect and try to just deal with all of that on your own, especially when they start to pile up and you've lost control. That's when it's time to. Yeah, I'm, absolutely. And I've, I've said it several times before that like with my three boys, when one of them's, or when they're all arguing between each other over a, a toy, a Power Ranger toy or an action toy or something like that, and, and something breaks on it and they start crying, I, I, I'll stand, I'll get down on their level and I'll say, look, this is there's absolutely nothing wrong with crying, but this isn't the right time to cry. <clears throat> you don't, yeah. don't really need to cry o over this. We can fix this. Let's fix it together. Yeah. And then you can carry on playing. Oh, right, okay, yeah. It's because they don't yeah. understand and it's frustration. And I yeah. think in adults, on, on especially on uh, construction sites, that that whereas a child would cry, it turns into anger. Anger. I think, mm -hmm. with, yeah. In, in, in adults. And that's why there can be so much conflict. And oh, don't go and speak to Rob over there because he'll just blow his top at you for no reason. Yeah. You, you, you get all that side of things and people are scared to come and approach you and then you then you become isolated and you yeah. think well why is nobody talking to me and then, and then that again feeds into Festers, the vicious side. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. It, it it just uh compounds all the other problems that uh, have got, that you've got flying around in your head that an easy conversation to start with could have prevented you know just just yeah. getting it, clearing the air and getting it all out there at the very start when you're feeling that way is, and yeah, I think that's a lesson we all have to learn at some point. What is underneath that? You got to figure out what's underneath that, what's causing you to have that short fuse and then dealing with it, dealing with whatever that is that's, that cause, yeah. that's causing. And it could be something so, I don't like to say small because it probably doesn't feel small in the moment, but something just minor that's grown yeah. that snowballed and it's yeah become this whole thing and and I think people too don't realize especially if you're in a position where you're managing other people how something like that can have such a ripple effect and such yeah. a yeah on the rest on everybody around you so then you have this whole team of people who are frustrated and distracted and un and yeah. unproductive and all of those things so that's really what I, the problem is I think probably on a lot of job sites yeah and then it, you take it, it home and then it, it overflows into your home life and yeah yeah the, the, then you have to deal with a whole different world of problems and it just yeah. it, it it's very hard to do to sit there and admit that you need the help and support sometimes and it and it is definitely the hardest step to make of saying mm -hmm. i need a bit of help can you help me with this i don't understand this yeah. Well, I promise everybody who's listening to it, once you do make those steps and, and reach out and get that support that you need, everything falls into place and becomes easier as long as you're ready to accept what needs to happen and what needs to change and what you need to do. Yeah. Then everything else right. sort of falls into place. That part is so important. You know, I think, and that's something you have to learn when you're, when you're the one trying to help people is not to take that because some people just aren't ready yet. Mm. Some people just, they come to you and they, maybe because somebody's told them to or pressured them into it or whatever, and then they come to you and they're just, um, maybe they're a little angry with you or whatever. That's something you have to learn also that yeah. don't, not to take that personal and just really trying to meet people where they're at and, you know, continue to offer your, your help whenever they're ready. 
yeah, help and support as and when as and when they need it. Yeah. And I mean, <clears> the, <throat> the people that aren't trained professionals like like yourself, Lindsay, that they, they understand that you're not there to cure the problem mm-hmm. for them. You're not, you're not there. You don't have to give them any solutions. A lot of the time, it's just listening. Um, is yeah. is the biggest thing that they need because they need somebody to listen. You might be sat there listening to them and they're talking. You think you don't have to worry about that, but you don't say that to them. You just you just sit and listen and let yeah. let them get it off the chest. And a lot of the time, I don't know if you have it when you have sessions with people and see that. I'll be sat listening to somebody and they'll be talking, and as they're talking, they're going, "That's why I feel like that." Oh, and that's why that's because they're just explaining it to and, and yeah. Um, sort of understanding it themselves as, as they as they talk about it and it, yeah. it makes it a bit easier for them yeah a lot of people will come to the conclusions on your own all you're there for when you're helping them i seen a really good illustration of this the other day and i, I should have shared it um it was like when i was in the middle of doing some other things but it was basically an illustration of what therapy is um if that's if therapy is the route you choose and the first picture is the person and it's got it's just like a silhouette of the person and it's got all this different color yarn and it's in the in the brain where the brain's supposed to be and it's all intertwined and yeah. unorganized and messy and then in the next per- then it like illustrates therapy or whatever and then in the next picture it's just all of those different colors organized yeah. and, and that's all it is that's it's not you're not doing any anything crazy like anything super profound or really um intense maybe some therapists or mental health professionals take those approaches but a lot of time it's just helping you organize your thoughts and feelings and redirecting you when you have negative thoughts or when you have unhealthy behaviors and all that stuff it's that's all it is it's just helping you get from a to b it goes back to the point what we spoke about before that getting somebody in that's not in that circle and it's different eyes looking in and see different things and you can point mm-hmm. out something that could be quite obvious that could change their whole life yeah and we it's good to have those people in your life in general family friends someone like you who um you know who's so passionate about the mental health stuff where you need to take it further is if you if you're feeling stuck and and if mm-hmm. you're feeling like none of that's really helping and you still feel that big weight that's when you you really need to take it further than that so it doesn't become where you're feeling suicidal because we i mean it's no secret that that's such a big problem in construction yeah and the 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 lady we spoke about this earlier up before we started recording the latest figures of the office national statistics here in the uk have been released and it's it's well in the 700 mark now Mm -hmm. and that and it's gone from two construction workers every working day to pretty much two construction workers every day. Every day. I, yeah. Are taking taking their own life now. And yeah. it absolutely needs to change because there's there's no need to be at that point in your life. And no. I, I, I the people that I've spoke with that have attempted on the life and they, they didn't complete. Um, and now they go on and talk about or the, the, the few that I've spoke to who are open and honest to talk about it. Two of them <clears throat> turned around to me and said, as soon as I did it, I regretted it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I instantly regretted it. Um, what, what, one of them tried hanging themselves. Um, he jumped out of his loft. Um, and he said, as soon as I stepped off the ladders, it hadn't even uh, put any force around his neck and he said I regretted it and he luckily he managed his, his father came home and found him and put him down uh, and the other the other gentleman had uh, drugs and, and alcohol um, and he says obviously he woke up and he, he hadn't died and he said I instantly regretted it because one he was so ill with it and two he knew he didn't want his life to end. And he turned mm-hmm. around to me, and it, I think he's described it the best out of everybody who's ever spoke, I've spoken about, is that I didn't want my, my life to end. I wanted this moment in my life to end. Mm-hmm. And that was a um, big, profound moment for me to think. That's a very sobering way to think about it. Mm-hmm. And I think it makes it quite easy for people 
well, not easy, but better on the, it uh, allows them to grasp it a bit better, the understanding of where they are in their mindset for them to go. Through. Yeah. It's a death is it's the only desperation option. to yeah, feel better yeah. to feel better and they feel like they have no other choice to feel better. Yeah. Um, yeah. but it doesn't have to be that way. You know, there's always another option. There's always another way. There's always somebody to call, even if you feel like there isn't. I'm sure you can think of someone to pick up the phone and call in that moment to to talk you down yeah. just to yeah. get through that moment. It, you know, it doesn't, but the goal is to obviously stay ahead of it so it doesn't mm. get to that point because yeah, that's it, hard to come back I mean they those are two really fortunate stories the way they worked out yeah and there's the the the, the, the figures I think it was mind charity over here said that for every not this isn't construction based this is um in, in general for every four completed suicide attempts there is 15 attempts mm -hmm. now if you do the figures on oh, i'm gonna get my calculator out because i'm rubbish at maths if, <laughs> if if you say so there was 744 i think deaths 740 we'll call it 744 deaths and then you times that by 15 um that's that's 11,160 attempts Mm -hmm. within our industry in the uk yeah that I've the scary about. part too when you start thinking about the um attempts and actually can actually committing suicide is um that more men do it and finish it like they mm -hmm. that statistically more women attempt and either back out or and men tend to use more lethal ways, whether it's yeah. a gun or hanging themselves or something like that. So that's even scarier because the industry is so male dominant. You know, and we're around heights, yeah, power tools, yeah, um, big machinery. There's there's many many different ways of yeah causing. My dad said that to me once. They they had like some talk at work or something and mental health was briefly kind of touched on it wasn't the main topic but it was briefly touched on and one of the, the scary parts of construction and, and suicide in construction is that construction workers have the means to do it easily yeah. um and that stuck with my dad for some reason i remember him calling me like it was like a week later and he was still thinking about it yeah. um that it, you know he like never really it almost like opened his eyes a little bit to maybe pay attention to the guys around him more yeah um yeah. which those things are really hard to hear and even when you talk about this stuff you want to be really careful because it can be triggering to some but it's yeah. important to talk about it so you're aware you know maybe you pay a little closer attention when maybe so, when someone's struggling you can notice it or you know yeah and i think if if you think that one of your work colleagues is suicidal ask them um, yeah. you're not you're not going to put the idea in the head because if you think it's already, there, in, their it's already in there yeah um ask yeah. them um you, you're not going to give them any ideas of how to do it but if you ask them and that might be enough for them to think shake them a little bit yeah, sh uh, sh yeah. i need to i need to do something about this if other people yeah. are noticing what's going on um then it, it must be pretty obvious that some i need a bit of help yeah hopefully and even if you don't feel comfortable coming directly out and asking them, just go check in and, you know, are you okay? You seem, yeah. you seem a little off. Is there anything I can do? Can I call you after work today? Um, do you want to go grab dinner after work? Just anything, you know, anything yeah. to get that conversation started. Don't feel weird about it. Absolutely. Yeah. hundred percent right. Yeah. Cause you'll that... feel worse if you don't and then something happens. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, um, it's it's a very tricky and taboo subject, mm -hmm. even with all the work that I do, um, it, it, it can be very difficult to talk about. But if we can start talking about open and honestly and making it not so taboo and not so difficult to talk about, then hopefully it will be a lot easier for other people to be brave and ask the questions of people and the people mm -hmm. that are feeling suicidal that it's not so much of a taboo subject that I can go and speak to somebody about it. Yeah, 
yeah yeah that's it's so important and um yeah just just realizing that it yeah it doesn't have to be that way you don't have to do it alone uh don't carry that around yeah it's just yeah. it's just it's not worth it whatever yeah. it is you're going through you it's I guarantee you it's not as bad as what you think it is mm -hmm. and yeah just getting that even if it's just a phone call with you to start you know I know you're always happy to to take those phone calls or to have those conversations yeah and you're yeah. one of the easiest guys around to talk to so yeah because our, our meetings always go on for about four hours <laughs> yeah for real <laughs> we had to put a time <laughs> limit on it today <laughs> But again, that, that just goes to show it doesn't have to be a heavy hitting, hard conversation. It can just be general yeah. chit chat. Yeah. And that can be enough. And I, I think the biggest thing for people to take away is that to be kind to mm -hmm. each other, to everybody. So important. You can be the difference in somebody's life. You don't mm -hmm. have to do anything. You can just be, morning, you all right? Or I'll get that for you to drop something. Do you want me to open the door? Do you need a hand with something? Yeah. Um, it's, it's just to be kind. I think a little bit some of the issue with that in the industry is that everybody thinks they have to be tough. And when you when you tell somebody to be kind, you know, you kind of get that reaction, like basically they just need to toughen up. This is a hard industry. If you don't like it, go do something else. But it doesn't mean that you have to be soft or cater to every single feeling everybody on the job site's having. It's just just being like kindness can go a long way, you yeah, know, and you can yeah. still be tough and get stuff done yeah. without all the extra. And, you know, even I think bullying is kind of a problem too. Yeah. So it's not even just people being short or stressed or anything like that. It's even more than that with like bullying. And yeah, I've noticed a trend in, in that some too. Yeah, there's a, there's a big thing over here of the apprentices or the young learners that are just starting out that they'll get pushed around a lot more and mm -hmm. people haven't got time to teach them anything and then they can all the, the group of them if they start um pushing them a bit harder and harder and harder and then it, it can go too far and it, it does turn into bullying and then you can start making somebody feel miserable coming yeah. into work every day feeling miserable and they probably will end up leaving the industry yeah and I, which I, Nobody wants that. Because I don't know what it's like over in the States, but there's a huge labor shortage over here, there skill shortage. Mm -hmm. We can't, can't get enough people over here. And I guess that leads on to the next question to you, Lindsay, is burnout. And mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of messages and I'm having a lot of conversations with people at various levels um, within the industry, the, the boots on the ground and the, the suits in the office are saying, I am absolutely burnt out. Not, I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't do any more. And I, I try and give them little bits of advice about setting boundaries for themselves and things like yeah. that. But just feeling so overwhelmed because everyone's it now, 10 minutes ago, three weeks ago, we want it done. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's a huge problem with materials over here at the minute, which seems to be getting easier. And then there was a big scare about fuel. That we didn't have yeah. enough fuel when we did. What a weird time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when we did, I mean, but again, it's 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 all adding to the the pressures that it to an environment that's already very pressured. Yeah. Um it it's just adding to it. Yeah. I wrote an article on burnout actually um a while back. I can email it to you if you wanna yeah. if you wanna read it. Just kind of well, why burnout is such an issue in the industry. Um, also kind of knowing the signs because I think a lot of people are burnt out and they don't even know it yeah because yeah. um, they just get so used to feeling that way and then you know tips on how to how to deal with that but it's really you mentioned it, it really comes down to boundaries um, mm -hmm. not letting people take advantage of your time and your energy and your yeah. and all of that stuff if you want to make it home for dinner three nights a week with your family do it yeah. you set an alarm on your phone and you leave and you get home for dinner three nights a week. Yeah. It's just, I know it, I know it seems impossible, but it's not. The job is going to be there when you get back there tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe you work a bit longer later in the night, the day tomorrow, 
but get home, you know, make time for that stuff because while that stuff can also feel like a responsibility sometimes, it's also, it's not. That, those are the things that keep us going, keep us moving. Yeah. And um, so it's just little things like that and making time for yourself on the weekend. You know, I just yeah. really need to decompress. I'm going to go in the other room by myself and just chill in the quiet yeah. or watch a movie or read a book yeah. or journal. I mean, anything, just you have to use that time to, to decompress. And yeah, there's no um, really big fix to burnout other than have setting boundaries and making time for yourself. And you, you just carve out that time. Off it, it's at, very at difficult least to do. Yeah. It is, it is. But it's so important because if you don't, burnout then leads to depression or anxiety or maybe you're drinking to cope with the, the pressure or even worse you know that's if you don't deal with it in the beginning stage of it that's where the big problem people don't just wake up overnight feeling suicidal or with a really bad drinking problem that stuff that happens over time because you don't cope you don't deal you just keep shoving things to the side and continuing down that I mean I know you've been there um just yeah. letting stuff pile up and pile yeah, up yeah. until it's it's too much you don't know what to do with it so absolutely um it really is and you, if, if if people think of it this way that if somebody <laughs> gave them another task to do at work whatever that task is you'd find the time for that task within your day so why mm -hmm. can't you find the time within your day for yourself for yourself mm-hmm you know and it's it's also little things go to lunch you know if you get yeah, an, if yeah. you get even if you just get a half an hour lunch go you know get out of the office or you know maybe go chill in your car for a little bit just take that time don't work don't work through lunch I used to do that when I was yeah. you know in grad school and doing my internship and working and all that I just I just ate over my keyboard a lot yeah. typing and eating and and it's just it wasn't necessary I could have taken the 15 minutes it took me to eat there's the whole culture of, was, to be seen to be going above and beyond yeah and not wanting to fall behind and you know I get all that but it's just those what I the notes I was taking and all that were going to be there 15 minutes later <laughs> you know it's just absolutely and I mean I don't know about you Lindsay as well that when you do take that time and you do give yourself a, a bit of time and space and go do something different you become more productive anyway yeah, and you do you get more you get more stuff done you haven't got your mind's not full of everything that you've got to do because you are organized and you do have the time to sit back and reflect on what you're doing um yeah. you you become more organized more productive and ultimately happier in your work yeah 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 i know like if i'm working on something that's really frustrating me i'll take even if it's 10 minutes i'll go down to i'll i work at home and i'll take my dog out back and like watch her just yeah. chase squirrels and do whatever because it <laughs> like it's funny so it like lightens my mood a little bit and then yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I'll come back to the desk and I'm good to go for a yeah. while longer they, they all but, they all get built in the end they all get sold yeah. in the end um yeah. and it it's a sad fact that if you drop dead at your desk or on the on site your job will be filled before you're even in the ground it will it's sad so. it's sad to think of that but it's it's true and yeah, there's nothing wrong with prioritizing yourself and prioritizing your family. Um, you know, if that's if that's relevant to you, if you're yeah, and we're, if you we're have absolutely a wife and kids at home or not saying right, <laughs> all tools down, we're going and marching off, and I'm not saying that, and uh, we're not saying no. that at all. But what no. I'm saying is, like you've just said, it prioritize things in your life mm -hmm. and organize your life around you because. You are the most important person in your world yeah. because if and if none of it works without you. Exactly. If you, if you're not a hundred percent on top of your game, then you're not there for everybody else that relies on you because it is that can be a huge pressure. Um, yeah. I'm I'm the only money earner as such in our house, and I feel the pressure of that that I need to get up and I need to go out to work at least five days a week to bring the money to pay the bills, and that, that can be a huge pressure on yourself. And, yeah. A lot of men um, within the industry feel have that pressure and understanding how to cope with that, as well as all the, the other pressures you have on you, can be very um, difficult and, and weigh you down a lot, thinking, yeah. 
I've got to get up. I've got to get out the door. I can't be ill. I can't have that day off. I can't do this. I can't do that. Especially Absolutely. when you're working for yourself too. Yeah. When you're, yeah. you know, you're. Yeah. If you're self-employed. So yeah. And you're, mm-hmm. you're turning around and I can't turn this work around in case I don't have work in six weeks time. And that, that comes in. Yeah. I, I turn around to people now that I've left the company that I'm working with. I, I went and looked at some work on my way home tonight. I said to the, the lady, I said, I can't get here. If, if the quote's accepted, it's acceptable for you. My start date for you at the minute is well into March, April next year. And she was like, okay, I, um, send us a price and I'm willing to wait if, if, if I can afford it. And people yeah. are prepared to wait. If, if you're good at your job, mm-hmm. that's not me sat here saying big no. head, but yeah. I'm saying if, if you're finding the right customers and it probably will um, whittle down the right customers that, that you want to work for and the people that you want to do work for um and if they're saying yeah okay we're fine with that we're happy to work uh, wait for you to come and do the work for us in x amount of time then it, it's it's better and just every yeah. everything can be done on these nowadays can't it? yeah and i sit there and i'll, I'll just punch in the date of when um around about when i'm going to be it'll be week commencing whatever it might be and I'll, I'll let them know and I can just keep looking at that and saying, right, I can't do it this week. And just, just little things like that. You become more organised and more, you get into better routines and you pick up better habits. And before you know it, you're doing it without even realising it. And then yeah. that frees you up to go and spend the time with your wife and kids or with your friends and family yeah. or go play golf or go and shoot some pool or whatever you want to do. Yeah. 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 And that's, you touched on a good point too. And I think I've talked about this in the past and in some of my posts and articles and stuff. Um, If you are doing your best work, you're able to do, there's, it gives you that flexibility to set those boundaries and to, and all of those things. So just when you are working, just do, do your best, do what you can do, you know, be a good coworker, be a good boss, be whatever it is that you are and just do your best. And that will free you up to Mm -hmm. you know and take some of that pressure off you and then you don't have to be worried about working the extra hours or squeezing in customers when you don't really have the time or yeah yeah, there's a lot of that's something now obviously working hard isn't easy but um if you take pride in what you do and yeah Yeah. it doesn't have to be hard I was, you get to I was set speak- the rules more then. You get to make the rules. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and you do you do in the hours and the jobs that you want to do. Yeah. And I was I was speaking to he was a flat roofing contractor. Um, so he does like fiberglass GRP roofing. And he said that he went to have a look at a job um last year and he said to the customer, he says, I can't do this. I'm not the person to do this job for you. I'm too busy. The product that we use isn't right for this particular job that you want doing. Anyway, he said he got a phone call um, about six months ago and he said that ever since the conversation, he says, at the time when we were having the conversation, I thought, oh, I've wasted my time here. He says, but now, looking back and reflecting on the conversation we had, I realised that you were honest with me um, and knew where I stood with you and you were prepared to uh, walk away from work that you probably could have done, but you knew you couldn't fulfil my needs. So for that we've got this job coming up i'm giving you all this notice and i want you to do it and he and he said there'd be nobody else pricing the job it would be just you because i know you're going to give me a fair price you're going to give me an honest price and you're going to do a job to the standard that we want as a company to be building yeah. on these houses that they build yeah that's that's like that's the perfect example yeah and it's just that i think it's stuff you learn when you're in business for yourself yeah um, it, it's time experience yeah I watch my mom she's she's a business owner and she's um she's changed so much in how she does things now if um she she owns party buses and stuff she has like transportation (laughs) and um she used to be like really passive when she was talking about pricing and, and she's really reasonable price but um it's still pricey but you know she has to carry high um liability insurance people drink on them and all that stuff and um now when she gets like somebody gives her a hard time about price or scheduling or whatever she's just like that's just i'm sorry it's what it is i i offer a really good service and um i have expenses and all those things and 
And if those people give her a hard time, she's so confident now to be like, is, is it really the business I want anyway? Absolutely. You hit yeah. the nail on that there. It's, it's right there. They're not prepared to come to terms because you can guarantee when it comes to paying. It's going to be a yeah. nightmare. Yeah, there's going to be something, you know, something about the service they didn't like and then want a, a refill. Yeah, it's just you yeah. learn that when the longer you do stuff. So I've like watched her kind of develop in that way, too. And I just think you do. It's something I learn every day in my own stuff is um, the type of people I want to work with and the type of people I don't. And I get to be I get to be choosy. I mean, yeah, this is my There's absolutely nothing wrong risk. With yeah, this is my risk. This is my um, livelihood. So I'm not going to get wrapped up in people who. Yeah, just, who I waste, know, sometimes waste it's just a feeling. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's just a feeling you get about something and you're like, this isn't right. This isn't yeah. what I stand for or yeah, whatever. I mean, it's, it's going a bit off topic, but with the apprenticeships in, in America that are, you might not have any inside knowledge on it, but they don't, it, certainly in the UK, they teach you how to do the trade, whatever the trade is you do. Um, they, they're very, very good at doing that over here. What we're not very good at is teaching um, kids coming through how to run a business because no. there's no doing tax returns, doing mm -hmm. invoicing, doing business costs, doing overhead and um, profit and overheads. And there's none of that taught over here because... No. As, as an industry in the UK, we are, I think, I'm trying to think, there's over a million um, micro independent uh, businesses. So there'd be principal contractor, the, the main people on site, and then there'd be a subcontractor to a subcontractor to a subcontractor. And yeah. The, mo over a million companies are less than five, uh, 15 employees. Um, and, and what you probably find out of all those, uh, companies that when they started up they were a, a bricklayer an operator or, or whatever mm -hmm. and they got more and more work and they built it up that way so they're absolutely amazing at the job that they do but sometimes there's there's a lack of skill set of how to run a business yeah how to how and then that that can play on you you think you price a job and you think oh yeah we're going to do good money on that but you haven't foreseen taxes or insurance or yeah. anything like that anything where, where am I going to find all this money and then you have all, all that weighing down on you and then that that can be a humongous pressure on you and then you're constantly chasing your tail and yeah. trying to learn from your mistakes all the time and yeah and I think that that's why we have a lot of businesses fail over here because there is that point yeah you want to hear a funny story I have a business degree and I was in college for nine years and the majority of the things that I learned about business I've learned from being in business and being <laughs> around other people in business yeah. I didn't learn it in school <laughs> it wasn't, I mean they teach you sort of some some stuff I get I it's been a while since I graduated with my business degree in 2014 so it's mm. been a while since I've because then I moved on and I I got yeah. uh, my master's in social work but um yeah, like even in the social work stuff, they don't, they talk that, you know, you can go into private practice or you can go off on your own. They don't really tell you how or how hard yeah. it is or um, what type of even, um, you know, mental health professionals have to carry certain types of insurance in case you yeah, get sued. Yeah. They don't tell you what I, ha I had to do all that research on my own. Like it's not, That's not something school no. taught me because a lot of people just go to work for somebody else and they cover their and they have insurance that company has yeah. insurance so you don't have to worry about any of that um but yeah it's the same i've everything i've learned is because of real life experience not yeah not and, training and you, you, you can't beat real life experience can you i guess no you can't now the tech like the um the mental health stuff obviously the technical things i learned in schools is, is helpful and necessary um i couldn't offer the services i do without that but yep. um everything else is the business aspect of it has been from being around chris or being around my mom or um my stepdad owns several businesses or just other contacts i've made um i've learned everything from those people so yeah, yeah. Um, everybody um will be expecting to see on the next apprentice <laughs> <Donald> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> is that even still going on TV? I don't, I don't think, I don't know if they play reruns of it or not. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't watch a lot of um, regular TV because no, I just I can't, I can't deal with it. <laughs> even that, even the ads now are ridiculous. Just yeah. yeah. Everything's political. Everything's COVID. Yeah. Everything's, I want to watch TV to relax. If I want to get depressed, I'll get on social media or YouTube or something. <laughs> Bring up back 2019 when we could sit and watch whatever we wanted. I know. Now everything's like even walking into stores, they're like making announcements about COVID and yeah. social distancing. It's like oh, just trying to buy some jeans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want to hear it. We get it. We we've we've all been living this for a while now. So yeah, it's not going away. So. Yeah, we know what we're supposed to do. But um, I guess that yeah. brings this episode to an end. Yeah. So, Another good one. Another no yeah. plan. Just roll with it. <laughs> roll. I love it. Just go with the flow. Yeah. They make for good ones, though. So. Well, thank you very All much. Right. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss any of our new episodes. We always love hearing from you guys. So if you have any topics you'd like us to discuss or just anything you'd like to add, Leave a comment and we'll be happy to share our thoughts. Once again, thank you for watching and I, I truly hope this added some value to your construction world.